Hi, I'm Terry with Prepped and Polished in South Natick, Massachusetts. I'm glad you could join me today. Today we're going to talk about punctuation on the ACT English section. Punctuation is an important component of the usage and mechanics part of the ACT English section. Punctuation questions involve identifying and correcting misplaced, missing, and unnecessary punctuation marks. They address not only the rules of punctuation, but also the use of punctuation to express ideas clearly. Why is punctuation tested on the ACT? Well, punctuation is a vital element of effective writing. It gives writing stop and go, so sentence parts don't collide, causing misreading, and it gives meaning. Although I'm sure that you are familiar with basic punctuation rules, there seem to be confusing punctuation rules that always confound students when they appear on tests. You don't want these to confuse you when you are taking the ACT English section, a 75 question, 45 minute test. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to conquer three of the most confusing punctuation rules by examining them in actual ACT English test questions. That way you can see the format and also learn strategies for eliminating incorrect answer choices. In case you're not familiar with the format, the ACT English section, there'll be five passages with certain words and phrases underlined and numbered. In the right-hand column, there'll be alternatives to the underlined part. You have to choose the best alternative or if you think that the original is best, simply choose no change. Many ACT English questions test comma usage, and one of the confusing areas for students is commas with interrupters. Let's look at a rule. Use commas to set off non-restrictive elements. In plain language, those are word groups that interrupt the flow of the sentence. They're non-essential. Do not use commas to set off restrictive elements those are word groups that define or limit. They are essential to the meaning of the sentence. Here's a quick test if commas are needed. Remove the words between commas. And if the remaining portion of the sentence, if it's a complete sentence and the meaning's not changed, then the commas are correct. So now let's take a look at an ACT example that tests the need for a comma before and after a descriptive phrase. Is it essential or non-essential? I went to the library every night, smuggling in large cups of coffee to keep me awake and stayed until closing time. Well, the descriptive phrase starting with smuggling and ending with awake could be plucked out of the sentence and it won't affect the meaning. I went to the library every night and stayed until closing time, so it's non-essential. We need commas around that the one before two is unnecessary, it's misplaced. Now let's look at the answer choices. No change. Well, as I said, we, um, the comma before two is misplaced, so let's get rid of A. Coffee comma to keep me awake, well that's the same as A, no change, so we can get rid of B. Coffee to keep me awake, that seems correct. We only need the comma here and after awake before smuggling and after awake, so I'm thinking this is the right answer. But let's look at D. Coffee to keep me awake, there's no comma after awake, and we do need the comma after awake. It's a descriptive phrase, but it's non-essential, so the answer would be C. Many ACT test questions test the use of apostrophes. Students seem to find it confusing with possessive nouns, possessive pronouns, and contractions. So let's look at a rule that will clear this all up. Use apostrophes to form the possessive case of nouns. That's ownership. If there's one owner, it's apostrophe S, John's test. If there's more than one owner, it's S apostrophe, like 10 boys' bikes. Words that are plural without adding an S form the possessive by adding apostrophe S, like women's apostrophe S, people's apostrophe S, children's apostrophe S. We also use an apostrophe, of course, to indicate a missing letter in a contraction. Like in the case of IT apostrophe S, it's really it is, 
and the apostrophe stands in for the missing letter I. I want to show you it because that one seems to be the most confusing for students. IT apostrophe S, as I said, is it is. ITS without the apostrophe is a possessive pronoun. It's one owner, like the cat drinks its milk. ITS apostrophe is not a word, but the ACT gives it as an answer choice. Never choose ITS apostrophe. You never use an apostrophe with possessive pronouns. For example, IT apostrophe S, no apostrophe hers, no apostrophe, yours, no apostrophe. Now we're going to look at an example on an actual ACT test that highlights this rule. The moon is closer to the earth when full, so its gravitational pull is stronger. If you're not sure whether to use a contraction here or a possessive pronoun, simply test it out by putting it is into the sentence. The moon is closer to the earth when full, so it is gravitational pull is stronger. That makes no sense, so we need the possessive pronoun. Let's look at the answer choices. Let's start on the bottom this time. So ITS apostrophe, I told you never to choose that one. So let's get rid of it. IT apostrophe S is a contraction for it is, and we just said that made no sense. Ones is a little tricky, but we're referring to moon. The moon is the antecedent. We don't want to say so one's gravitational pull, so let's get rid of that. And no change. We do want to use the possessive pronoun it's that refers to the moon, so A would be the correct answer, no change. Many ACT questions test semicolon usage, and students are often confused about using semicolons with commas. Let's look at a rule. A semicolon is used between items in a series when one or more items include commas. Here's an interesting sentence to illustrate this rule. Classic science fiction sagas are Star Trek, with Mr. Spock and his large pointed ears, semicolon, Battlestar Galactica, with its Cylon Raiders, semicolon, and Star Wars, with Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Darth Vader. Here, the semicolons have done all the work. They have shown us where the major groupings are. They've sorted it out. And so even though there's commas along with the semicolons, uh, the semicolons point out to the reader where the major groupings are. Now let's look at an actual ACT example using semicolons and commas. I grew up with buckets, shovels, and nets waiting by the back door, hip waders hanging in the closet, tied table charts covering the refrigerator door, and a microscope sitting on the kitchen table. Here it seems like the semicolons have done all the work for us. There's items in a series, and we know all of these items, buckets, shovels, and nets, are waiting by the back door. And there's a semicolon. The hip waders are hanging in the closet. The tide table charts are covering the refrigerator door. And a microscope is sitting on the kitchen table. Semicolons have sorted out the major groups for us, so to me it looks like there should be no change. Let's look at the answer choices. Well, A is no change. I'm thinking that's right, but let's check the others. Waiting, comma, by the back door. That comma is not necessary over here. We just need the semicolon. Uh, waiting by the back door, comma, that should be a semicolon, as we said, separating major groups, what's by the back door and what's in the closet. Waiting by the back door, no punctuation, it needs a semicolon there to separate the major groupings. So A would be the answer. The ACT English test is possibly the easiest section for you to make vast score and skill improvements. I hope I helped you to conquer three confusing punctuation rules so you can boost your score on the ACT English test section. Here's an added benefit. Using punctuation effectively will not only help you improve your writing skills in general, but it will also improve your writing skills specifically on the ACT essay. It's a win-win. Good luck.